We also have Alicia Sivanasan live from Janesville this morning um, to tell us about a sniper class taking place there. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. That's right. I'm here in Janesville, Wisconsin. The Janesville Police Department, they're hosting a sniper class for the second time this year. The first one was earlier in the spring, and it's bringing about nearly 20 students from all over the country. I'm here with Sergeant Mark Ratzliff, who helped coordinate this class. Why bring this class here to this area? Uh, it allows us the opportunity to train not only people from our area, but our own officers. Uh, a lot of our students have been through the sniper class curriculum, and so we're continuing that to set a standardization for our uh, basic snipers. Uh, so new snipers coming into the field are all trained the same consistently. Uh, sniper craft country providing uh, the same training is kind of standardizing the industry and setting a baseline nationwide. And why do you, as far as like myths go, dispel some of those myths for us as far as public perception and media. Uh, one, one of the things uh, we see often is in the media, if someone uh, murders someone with a, a rifle or a long gun, like a shotgun, or from a position of concealment, they loosely use the term and call that person a sniper, which is somewhat insulting to both the military and law enforcement snipers. Uh, the term is used uh, incorrectly in that context, and there's a lot of training and dedication that goes into uh, earning the term sniper. Can you talk about some of the training? Uh, what does the course, the week-long course, involve? Uh, the first day was uh, primarily classroom. Uh, the students are uh, taught what is current law, case law, things that are changing around the country, uh, national trends that we're seeing in the sniper community, um, camouflage techniques, fitness, uh, staying hydrated. And then do they use some of this gear right here in front of us? Can you sure. walk us through yeah. this? Um, down there on the end is uh, Remington 700 with a loophole scope. That's a relatively common platform we see around the country, uh, mainly because of cost and accuracy ratio. But there are many other manufacturers of weapon systems out there that are in use uh, around the country by various law enforcement agencies. Um, next to that is a AR-15 platform. Um, it's gas-operated, semi-automatic uh, weapon system. Um, that's used as a supplemental weapon. Um, our operators use those as, as entry weapons. Um, we have the body armor. Uh, body armor for snipers, um, because of the shooting positions they have to get into, sometimes it's not applicable, so they won't wear body armor or wear different types of body armor, more uh, fit for their type of deployments. Uh, next to that's a battle belt. Um, this is just supports your sidearm, other equipment. It's got a harness system to distribute the weight more efficiently, uh, that way conserving energy, allowing the sniper to be effective on their deployment longer. Thank you so much, Sergeant. Again, you guys, the week-long sniper class is for law enforcement and military personnel only. It's a very intense training, and they're here again through Friday. For right now, Emily, back to you. All right, thank you, Alicia. It is